Nabo South Jersey is pleased and honored to introduce to you Cheryl Norton, who is the Executive Vice President of America Mortar. She is representing that company to receive the Company of the Year Award. Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. We're honored to have you. So I would like to ask you a few questions and then towards the end of the interview, we'll do some fun questions so we can get to know you personally. So be ready. <laughs> What can we do as women to power one another to achieve greater equity and success? I, I think that, first of all, we have to try to get to know each other a little bit and really know what the, the women that we work with, what their needs and wants are. Not every woman has the same kinds of career goals. So having those candid conversations and just trying to figure out what the women that we're working with, um, where their kind of end goals are, if you will, are really is really important. And I also think that we've got to give them the opportunities to network and to have those development opportunities. We've got to be intentional about that so that they have every opportunity possible to build their team and to um, just have a, a strong network of uh, supporters throughout the business. What do you think is one of the greatest accomplishments of American Water? You've been with them for a long time. You also served as president. What do you think is their greatest accomplishment? Well, we provide a life-sustaining service. And so I think that in and of itself is such a great accomplishment, but it really um, is more about how we do what we do and the passion of the employees that we have. I'm just so proud of the team that I work with all across American Water and being able to create an environment that's both physically safe and emotionally safe and allow our employees to go out and, and really build on that passion to um, do business in an environmentally um, supportive way, but also really addressing, um, you know, inclusion all across the board and, and helping our employees to just be the best they can be every day when they come to work. It's just such an honor. And, you know, they go out there and provide great service to our customers 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And I'm just so proud of, of what they do um, to provide service to the communities that we serve. Tell us a little bit about your background. You've been with American Water for quite a long time. What is your background? I was a, um, a biology major in college. And so I started working for American Water right out of college as a uh, microbiology researcher. And so learned the business from a very different perspective than a lot of people within American Water have learned the business. So looking at the quality of water, looking at the ways we treat water, was was the start that I got. And I worked in the laboratory environment for almost 20 years. So then I moved into the operations side of the business where I was dealing with operational challenges, with customer service, with um, just, you know, all different aspects of the business, which was really kind of an interesting change for me. And I've been able to move around a bit, both through positions, but also geographically within the business. And it's just been a really great experience for me and about three years ago, my family and I moved here to New Jersey, and we're just thrilled to be here. We love it. What values or business ethics are important to you as a leader? That's a huge company. So what are your values? I think that um, my values are really solid in, in the areas of humility, um, integrity, and transparency. So through the years, I found that being open with people and being willing to say, I got that wrong and you know I, I should have done that differently has just really gone a long way with building trust with my employees and the, my peers that I work with and I think that's been key to my success but it's also key to the success of the business for leaders to be able to um, approach things in that way and if you're really transparent with people it gives them a great opportunity to understand the business a little better but also to be able to um, give back to the business and to really make the right decisions across the business. How do you keep people motivated on your team? Motivation can be really hard. You work a lot of long days, people get tired, they get a little kind of, um, they can get disengaged. COVID's been a real challenge with that. But the way to keep people most engaged is to really be open about what the challenges are that the business is facing and help them understand 
exactly what they do every day and how that helps the business be successful. So really setting clear expectations and letting people just understand, hey, this is how I give back to the business. This is this is the contribution that I make to make American Water successful. Leading by example is really important. I think that's one of the most motivating things too. What do you yeah. see as the most significant challenge for women in business today? I think, you know, it's probably a pretty common answer, but I think it's really balance. It's figuring out what are those most important things to me? And that's not the same for everyone. So we just had a conversation with some female leaders last week about how do you, how do you achieve work-life balance? And it's different for all of us. And I think that women just have to figure out what it, what, what is the most important thing to me or things to me and how do I put them in place? We can't be everything to everyone. And so many times we try to do that. We try to be the moms, we try to be the caregivers, the, you know, um, do all the shopping and the, the cooking and all of those things. And then we feel guilty if we're not really devoting the time to work or vice versa, if we're devoting all of our time to work. We've got to figure out what that balance is for each of us and try to put that in perspective. And I think that's a huge challenge for a lot of women. Do you think the next generation coming up is getting a better grip on the balance? Because I see the younger women have uh, more faith in having their partners be a full partner. Do you think that that's really changing today compared to how you were raised? I do. And I think that, um, that women from my generation have taught our daughters in a lot of case, cases that it, it can be different. It doesn't have to be like that. And that, that we should be depending on others to help out around the house. And I just had a conversation with my daughter earlier today um, saying, you know, it, it's a joint effort. It can't be all one person kind of leading the way there. And I think that, that they are looking at it very differently and, and figuring it out um, different than what we did growing up. Maybe. Finally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely agree. Are you an on-time person or are you always rushing to get the meetings on time? Are you always late? What What is your MO when you're trying to get to a meeting? You know, I used to work for someone who was five minutes late for every meeting. And I saw the level of frustration that that gave the entire team. So I try to be five minutes early to everything. If I'm not five minutes early, I feel like I'm late. That's good advice. What do you do for fun? Well... It's, it's a little hard, it goes back to that balance, but really spending time with my grandchildren and also just kind of relaxing. We like to be around the water. So in the summertime, we try to go to the shore, spend time by the pool. Those are the kinds of things I like to do, but I also like to just kick back and read a good book. Who's your celebrity crush? Oh, my celebrity crush, that's kind of hard. Well. Uh, my husband and I have binge watched a little bit of Yellowstone lately, so I would have to say Kevin Costner is um, probably my celebrity. He's pretty guy. hot. <laughs> He's pretty hot. <laughs> for an older guy, right? <laughs> yeah, for an older guy. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, me too. If you could have a meal with anyone in the world at any time in history, who would that person be? I think for me, it would be Rosa Parks. And and I say that because, you know, I've I've... Um, seen some articles this month about her because not only is this Black History Month, but it's also um, her birthday month. And and when I really started kind of reading more about Rosa Parks, what I didn't realize was really the reason why she felt compelled that day to stand her ground. And I just think she was so courageous and she had a lot to lose from a personal That's real courage. It, she just stepped up and um, and stood strong, and it was she was just amazing. So I would love to to um, have have dinner with her. What advice would you give your teenage self? Are you happy with yourself as an adult? I I would give myself the advice of you know um, really think about your capabilities and have more confidence in your capabilities. I can honestly say that pretty much every role that I've been offered, I've taken a step back and said, wow, I don't know if I can do this. This may be bigger than I am. And, and so I've been promoted numerous times throughout the business and I've been given a tremendous amount of responsibility here, but American Water has been fantastic 
at, at developing me and leading me down the skills path that I needed to be ready for that next role. So I, I would say have more confidence and maybe push a little harder. Again, that's great advice. And Cheryl, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. And congratulations again to American Water for their award. We're so glad we were able to share. Thank you so much. We're so honored to receive the award and, and really appreciate your organization and what you do for the women businesses across the um, southern part of the state. You're welcome. Thank you.